Hey and thank you so much for joining me in today's Take 5 Art video for the month of May. So if you're new to this channel or to Take 5 Art in general, Take 5 Art is a challenge where you use the 5 prompts that one of our collab group ladies has chosen to create something creative. And most of us use that to create an art journal page, but it can be anything creative that you want. And this month, the prompts were chosen by Shay from the Sleepless Planner. And they are one, an unexpected tool, two, a black and white background, three, something inspired by your favorite artist, four, textured elements or texture base, and five, hidden messages. So if you're interested in joining, go pause this video, grab your craft supplies and craft along with me. So for my background, I decided to first add a little border with some watercolor. The colors are inspired by my artist that I will reveal later and use this practice calligraphy page that I still had laying around. So for my favorite artist, I chose this painting by Cuckoo Illustrations and I have her coloring book. At first I thought I would um, cut out this page, maybe even the already colored one, but I just, I can't bring my heart, I can't, can barely get myself to color these pages. So I decided to trace them instead of cutting it out. Um, also the image was a little bit too big, so this made it fit a little bit better. And I personally don't think that tracing is a bad thing, especially because I am crediting her. I am showing you her original work. I am showing you that I'm tracing it. So please don't come for me in the comments. Just know that tracing is a great way to practice your own way of creating art. So if you're not confident, start by tracing. As long as you make sure not to use that work as your own so just credit the original artist and then it should be fine. So after tracing it with pencil, I traced my own tra drawing with my Unipen fine liner. Those fine liners are waterproof. So I was able to use watercolor on top of it. And for the watercolor, <laughs> I struggled. I struggled a lot to get the correct colors. So, um, I will skip ahead a little bit and just show you the finished colors that I decided to use. Well, I mix a little bit more. And for the actual coloring, I uh, started on the places that I would be okay with to be darkest and then added water to my brush and spread out that color. So here you see the ears are a little bit darker than the rest of the elephant's body. And I made enough paint for a bigger surface, so I decided to do the balloon in the same color. This also created a little bit more coherency in the drawing. Then I mixed some of that bright orange color with my other paint because I didn't have enough paint anymore. And colored her sweater with this. As you can see, I don't use the exact same colors, but I am inspired by the painting that seal from Cuckoo Illustrations did. And I added a little bit of blush <laughs> because that's a typical thing that Cuckoo does with her animals. They all have these little blushes and I just think it's the cutest thing ever. For the, um, I don't know, the basket from the hot air balloon, I mixed a little bit more brown with the gray that I already had and I made a little bit fake because I didn't wait until my gray paint was, or my sweater of the elephant was dry enough before I colored in next to the surface next to it. Um, that's a mistake I make quite often, but that makes the paint bleed. And for the pattern on the hot air balloon, I decided not to go for a blue like she did. And I decided to go for a little bit more of a simpler pattern, simply hexes with a little dot that connects them. And doing that took a little bit of time, so 
the basket could dry a little bit and then I added that basket pattern to the basket. <laughs> And for the sweater, I decided not to go with flowers, but with simple dots. So yeah, I simplified the entire painting a little bit, um, but that's, I guess, what being inspired by means. <laughs> and that's why I love coloring books. Um, you can create your own version of something that has been created by many other people. So for the next prompt, prompt number five, hidden messages, I decided that instead of the planets and stars that the little elephant in Cecile's painting is fishing, my elephant would be fishing for hidden sweet messages. So I colored in, I, I drew some random circles and colored them in with uh, one of the colors that I had already used in the painting. And for this, I wasn't too, too neat with staying in the borders because I was going to cut it out anyways. And that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> so I comp when doing this, I completely forgot about the uh, another prompt, the unexpected tool. So I decided to go for this last minute. <laughs> and I'm basically just using white watercolor uh, with a little bit of water on a small playing card in order to create a little bit of a whitewash over the letters because they were a little bit uh, too harsh I thought and that didn't work as I would have hoped so I also used to brush a little bit but that's my little secret. <laughs> For the textured elements, I decided to add lace, my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah, and at first I wanted to add lace on the background, but then I thought that would look so cute on the hot air balloon. So I just glued strips of this blush lace on top of the painting that I did of the hot air balloon. And um, I used a glue stick. But I think I would recommend using some type of fluid glue because <laughs> this uh, was very messy. <laughs> I had to do a very thick coat of the glue stick. But yeah, just trimming off the edges here in order uh, to make it the same shape as the hot air balloon, which was just a little bit easier to do after I glued down all the strips. And then I found out that my hot air balloon was still a little bit too big, but that's okay. I just cut off the edges after I glued it down on the page. And I have to admit, this is my favorite Take 5 art spread I have done ever since I started. I mean, I've enjoyed a lot of them, but this one I just felt so inspired by using an artist that I am inspired by and I felt it felt very freeing not to have to create my own art from scratch. <laughs> I don't know, it just I, I just love Cecile's art. I love 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 it and using it just makes my spread so pretty. <laughs> um yeah for the hidden messages I wrote a message on the back of these circles that I cut out. Um, they're all positive messages like hugs and kisses or you're doing great and um, stay safe for the current situation and hoping you are doing well. Things like that. Just little messages that I wanted to give myself. And in order to stick them down, I was again inspired by Cecile's art and I used little star stickers because that ties in the stars that she painted in her painting. And it just adds that little extra reflective, little bit of gold, you know, I love a little bit of gold. And you can still flip open the messages. So they are hidden, but you can still see them, which if I glued them down, why would I have written the message down? That would have been, I don't know. That was my first idea, but then 
this idea came to my mind and I just love the little detail that the little stars add. I struggled a little bit with <laughs> getting these stars off because they are tiny, but yeah, I just, I love it. And I think that is it for everything. I just added a lot more stars randomly on other spaces as well, making sure to cover the border to give it a little bit of more of a dynamic. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Well, I hope you had fun watching this video. I know I did love creating this spread. I hope you find an artist that you are as inspired by as I am with Cecile. Thank you, Shay, for choosing these prompts. And if you make anything with these prompts, make sure to send your video to us or tag us in your photo on Instagram because we all love seeing what you create. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and I will see you next time. Bye bye.